This is Jack Miner. I'm uh, Chief Investment Officer with uh, Maryland Tedco. And uh, uh, thank you for joining us again for another uh, uh, podcast where we talk with different people uh, within the investment community uh, about things that are important within uh, Maryland. Um, today, I'm really happy to uh, have Catherine Hill Ritchie uh, join me uh, in a discussion around uh, all sorts of different things. Uh, Catherine just joined the TEDCO team this week, and uh, we're very excited to have her join. Um, I'm going to have Catherine talk about herself real quick, and I've got a few questions for her. Um, but uh, Catherine, let me uh, send it over to you. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, please. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I'm so glad to be on the team. Uh, very excited about my new position. Um, you know, I've spent almost 19 years, almost 20 years in the investments and finance world, and uh, but outside of Maryland. So I grew up here and uh, love the state of Maryland. But you know, uh, as a young person, wanted to have some different experiences, and I did graduate from University of Maryland. Um, but then I ended up going to New York City, which a lot of people, you know, the mecca of finance. Uh, great experience got my MBA there, worked there. I also worked in Switzerland. Uh, but, you know, I always still had friends and family back in Maryland. And it, it's just a beautiful lifestyle here, um, you know, and I'm just glad to be back. And then I met you and the, the CEO, Troy, and I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, this is a fantastic organization. And we got to know each other. And, and now look where I am. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's nice to be, yeah. Yeah, be full circle. Yeah, that that's awesome. Uh, and and so what uh, what kind of brought you back? Uh, I know you talk about. I mean, Maryland is a beautiful state. I, I love it. Um, and uh, but what draw you, what drew you back? Well, I loved living in New York in terms of the uh, career building, the people I met, um, fantastic for uh, a young person. Um, well, older people too, but I think uh, there comes a time when you want to kind of transition to a different lifestyle, living in teeny apartments for a long time. Um, and just, you know, this area is very exciting to live in as well. You know, we have, the, there's obviously the politics of DC, but, you know, here in Maryland, there's the national labs, both my mom and dad had worked at NIH um, and there's just a lot to offer here. And so it was so attractive to basically come back home. Also, you know, there's the beaches, there's um, Chesapeake Bay. I mean, there's Baltimore yeah. uh, and then way out to Deep Creek. Uh, so, you know, it's a fantastic state and, and I'm so comfortable here. So I feel it has so much to offer. And uh, I was, you know, it was an easy move to come back. Yeah. Well, welcome home uh, and uh, welcome to the Ted Co team. So let's, let's talk about your professional career a little bit. Um, what uh, in the almost 20 years of investing, uh, what, what's your favorite sector? What are things that you like the most, um, maybe historically and going forward? What are your favorite uh, areas? Certainly. So, you know, I, I was interested in investing in my 20s and, uh, you know, dates me, but in and around the, the last, the first tech bubble and the late 90s, the dot com era. And I thought, wow, this is really fascinating. Uh, all this technology and the Internet and, and just an explosion of possibilities. Um, and so that's really what motivated me to start personally investing. And, you know, I was young and, and I made mistakes, but I also did pretty well. And I thought, well, obviously I'm a great tech investor. I should go to business school and do this professionally. So I went to business school and um, getting an MBA was a great experience, but it does kind of take take the risk out of you a little bit because that's when you, it's like, oh, business plans and and forecasting and uh, dis discounted cash flow statements. I'm like, what is that? So uh, it, it was funny because that kind of brought in the reality of business and finance, but it really did open my eyes to the variety of investing there is out there. So when I first started, I did start more fund structures, hedge funds, private equity, uh, venture um funds. And that was a great learning experience, I think, for me. Uh, and I was able to travel all over the world. I lived in Geneva, Switzerland for seven years. But, you know, I, I got to go to, you know, Australia, China, all over Asia, all over Europe, all over the US and interview fund managers. 
basically to allocate to them. And I think that was a great experience because I saw how each of them, you know, analyzed uh, companies to invest in whether public or private. And that gave me a great um, exposure to all kinds of industries. I would say, you know, um, definitely technology always sparked my interest, but also even, um, you know, looking at uh, different countries and geographies, uh, certainly, um, uh, you know, the growth of the tech sector in the U.S. was just has been just booming for a long time. But really, that was my first uh, that really got my interest. And I think was great training for what I'm doing today. Yeah. And so un- unpack the kind of the international investment uh, spectrum. You know, what, what are some differences that you saw uh, in terms of maybe investment strategy or, um, you know, stage of investing um, maybe even in the U.S. and internationally? Any, any trends that you saw or that you see? Well, I still see how global investors, you know, I I was just in Dubai in October and uh, I constantly in touch with um, investors, family offices and funds all over the world. The U.S. is still number one in terms of largest market diversity um, and they feel, you know, stability. But I think, you know, there are fantastic opportunities in emerging markets and other places, too. But, you know, how do you do that? And and I think um, there are experts on the ground that can help. Uh, with those kind of investments. But I think for me, traveling to all these places was an eye opener um, about also just the different cultures and what's important to them and and what can prosper in one country, but not another. So for me, uh, being able to travel and get exposure and especially in China, I mean, look at our supply chain. So much of our technology um, comes from there. And that was fascinating too, to see the just huge manufacturing. So, yeah. and, and we're, you know, we, we are affected by uh, what they do and their, their, um, you know, chip supply and things like that. So in a way uh, we're really still all interconnected, but I think uh, having that international experience when I came back home gave me a good perspective in that I think I'm more open-minded and um uh, maybe more sensitive to people from different cultures, religions, everything That's like crazy. that, because I got to meet such a variety of people and work with them professionally. Yeah. And so let's keep following that thread. I think that, um, you know, Tedco is very much focused on ensuring that we do everything we can to uh, uh level the playing fields with diversity, equality, and inclusion, um, making sure that we um, actively and purposefully uh, um, uh, address those areas. And I think um, I'm going to take a step back and look at um, maybe my first experience with bias in the workplace. I was right out of college uh, and I was working for a woman in the software industry. Uh, and she and I went to a customer location and I was fresh out of college. I didn't know how to spell computer. And uh, we were on a call with a, with a, a, a customer and um, the customer would ask me the question. And then my boss, she would answer. And then he would ask me the question and then she would answer. And uh, maybe because I was raised by my two sisters and my mom, I was super sensitive to the fact that I'm like, dude, you better start talking to her because she knows the answers and I don't. Uh, but it was uh, at a really er- early age professionally. Uh, I was like, wow, this is uh, really interesting. Um, and so, I, you know, you and I are working in an industry where there's 13 percent of the investment, uh, 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 t- you know, of the investors are women. Um, and so, you know, how do we, how do we, you know, uh, navigate those waters? How do we, um, you know, make sure that we're doing it differently and doing it better? I mean, I'm delighted that you, uh, chose to work with us because, you know, we want to have somebody who sits across the table that looks like the investor, right? And that's what we have to do. Um, but, uh, you know, you've had, you know, some great experiences and, you know, kind of unpack that for me a little bit from your perspective. Well, um, one thing I've been doing now that I'm, you know, <laughs> working for several years is 
being able to speak at universities. And there's been, it's interesting because these things didn't exist when I went to school, but there are, you know, women's investor clubs at universities and women entrepreneurial clubs. And that didn't, that didn't exist. And that's been great to go to universities and say, Hey, first of all, a career in finance is really exciting. Like it's awesome. Go for it. So that's one thing is encouraging younger generations to go for it. And also, uh, I think for me, I, I've been in situations where, you know, I go to a meeting and someone's looking behind me like, oh, where, where's your boss? Or, and when I was CEO of a yeah. fintech company, or, or um, you were, can I have a cup of coffee? You know, like I'm, oh my. Just, you know, stuff like that. It's happened. And I think, you yeah. know, I started my career 20 years ago in New York City. Right. Um, I got great experience, but, um, you know, things were, uh Different. Uh, different than today, uh, certainly better than the, like the 1950s. But, you know, yeah. I think uh, I know what it feels like to be marginalized or to be looked over. You know, I know what it's like to be in positions where, um, and maybe I didn't get the adv advancement, but, you know, uh, it also made me stronger and work harder. But I think that uh, as my career has progressed and I'm starting to, uh, you know, invest more personally as well, uh, I am keeping an eye out for those kind of diverse founders and women because I do want to champion them because I've even seen it in meetings where there's a great idea, a great CEO, but they really want a male on the team or something like that. And you think, gosh, that's just, is that still happening? And it is. So if I can be a part of the uh, change or just recognition, uh, a, a different voice, that's what I want to do because I think it's really important. And as we've seen, I mean, even in the public markets, when there are women on the boards of public companies, the stock does better. There's mm -hmm. all kinds of statistics out there about how um, men and women working together actually create a better company and 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 um, uh, are, are work together well in finance. Women have very good portfolio uh, management track records. That's also just fact. So I think it's a great career. To me, it's so exciting because I learn something new every day. You know, I am not going to create a new medical device that'll save someone's life. It's unlikely. I'm not an engineer. But to be a part of that or to be a part of some kind of new technology or um, software that could help people or uh, make businesses more efficient. I, I mean, that's really exciting that I can do that from a finance career. So I learn about almost all industries. I mean, every day I'm learning something new. So I think that's what's so exciting is that a career in finance um, uh, just uh, really expand your horizons, but there are more and more women going to finance. And it's also because the statistics prove itself that we can compete and, and do really well in this industry. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I want to come back to that uh, topic again in a, in a minute, but you were talking about the different aspects of making an investment as well. Um, is there a certain area that you like to focus on uh, when you're doing diligence on a company? Um, you know, I think uh, for me, it's about the technology. Um, I, I like medical devices. I like life sciences technologies. And so I really, you know, drive down that path when I'm doing diligence. Um, uh, others are more marketing related, you know, looking at the, uh, the rollout. Do you have a certain area that's kind of your, your sweet spot when you're doing diligence on a company? Well, certainly I agree with you, uh, you know, is the technology even viable? And I have uh, had a lot of background on heavy um, focus on IP and things like that, which are really important in a lot of industries. But at the same time, I have to say the biggest lessons I've learned are really uh, management because you could, I've seen amazing technology and there is amazing technology out there sitting on shelves mm -hmm. because there isn't the appropriate management or CEO. And there are sometimes, um, you know, fantastic scientists or inventors, they are not um, business people and that's okay. They, they don't need to be, but um, realizing that it's a team effort and maybe other people could be in leadership positions and they're better to take the company out is something that not everybody is um, has the people skills to recognize in themselves. So 
what I find is that that can be a disappointing stumbling block where you have fantastic technology, but if this person doesn't realize that they need to give up the reins or uh, maybe develop themselves a little bit, that the management can have the entire thing come crashing down and then nobody gets to benefit from that. So, you know, those are some of the things I've learned over the years, but you know, it is a complete package, right? All of these things are important, yeah. um, but some companies, you know, if they, one area that we talked about uh, mentioned is, is super strong, then you might think, well, we can build a board, we can hire more to fill in those gaps, but yeah. really, um, uh, there are a lot of pieces that you have to look at, but I'm definitely always interested in getting to know uh, the CEO and the senior leadership team. So, you know, at, at TEDCO, um, we cannot take uh, a, um, a board seat um, because we're an instrumentality of the state. You know, there's some things that we cannot do. Um, but when you're looking at the management team and when you want to try to help put your thumb on the scale, uh, as it were, to, um, uh, to bring in additional management, additional support for them, um, I think the big question is how can we put our thumb on the scale and ensure that women get an equal shot at those management uh, roles? What, what can we do at TEDCO? to make sure that uh, women are introduced as management into uh, our portfolio companies. Any ideas, any thoughts? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, one of the best things to do is, you know, we've got a lot of talent here in Maryland, uh, but we need to make sure that we cultivate that. And so when our portfolio companies have an opportunity, we already have a strong pool of, of women who could take or diverse people who could take those spots. So it's about having that network and that um, uh, people that we know uh, would be interested in kind of keeping those relationships alive. But even if those people don't take a, a full-time job, they could be an advisor to the company. So I think that's a great way to do it. And, and it's about getting the message out. I mean, we have a fantastic team at TEDCO who are really good at marketing. And I think, um, you know, but making initiatives uh, to make sure that we know local executives, we know who are kind of the stars that are out there because this area is incredibly educated and there's a lot of talented people. So I think we've got um, uh, a good basis to work with, but we just want to keep those relationships fresh. Yeah. What, what would you tell uh, young women who are getting either into the investment industry or into uh, a startup uh, management role? What recommendation would you give them uh, in terms of skill set or, or whatever? What, what recommendation would you give them? Well, first of all, don't be intimidated. I have to tell you, one of the lessons I learned, you know, New York finance career was even if they were wrong, sometimes the young men are pounding the table. This stock is going to be great. This company is going to be great. You really have to take a look at it. And even if they were wrong, they were like, the boss was like, okay, you know, you're pretty passionate about it. You, you made some good points. Okay. And then sometimes I would see young women be like, well, I think this might be a good stock, but I'm not really sure. It's like confidence, just, you know, confidence is so important. And, and, you know, as they say, um, you know, a fake it till you make it. You may not feel That's it on the inside, but yeah, speak exactly. confidently yeah. because people love that. They want a leader, whether it's a, if you're an investor or if you're working at a company, you know, you might be wrong, but you need to have done your homework, first of all. Don't ever just right. spit something out there, but do your homework so you can be confident in your decision. And people want to hear that. And, and they want to hear confidence in a strong voice. And they say, okay, this person knows what to do. Uh, because then they'll feel like you care and that you've done some homework. But I think that's really important. But also, you know, making sure your, your skill sets are down, you know, in finance, I, you know, I had to take all those classes and I did well, but it's a matter of making sure you have that because then, um, uh, you you do also feel just confident in yourself and in your work. But I think um, uh, those would be probably the two things I would focus on. Would you rather be an investor in Manhattan or Dubai? Oh, well, you know, I was born in New York City, actually, and I love New York City. I mean, it's and I, I can walk around there and it's still like home, you know, yeah. and and yeah. and the restaurants and everything. But um Dubai is an interesting, fascinating place. 
it's it's and, and it's really changing in terms of um, they you know, have really long-term plans. They're really trying to create a tech hub. And that's fascinating. And, and also because there isn't a lot of the old infrastructure we have in places like New York, they can adopt technology uh, a lot faster, but then also they don't have our, our unfortunately uh, sometimes, um, you know, slow systems here to adapt because there are so many checks and balances you have right. to get through, right? Sometimes friction helps, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I think, um, uh, I think both places are fantastic, but uh, obviously there's a fantastic ocean and beaches in Dubai, which are really fun as well. Uh, but New York, it's just the restaurants and the culture are just uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's it's a fantastic place. It's it's hard to compare. Yeah, when when you look at um, the fact that I mean, within a two hour drive or a two hour train ride of uh, of Baltimore, um, we've got what tens of millions of people uh, in in the U.S. population. Um, how how can we create um, a unified front from a investment community? Um, you know, there are there are the 800 pound gorillas out there that uh, get a significant amount, uh, overweight uh, amount of their venture capital. Um, and uh, I think it affects us where we lose our talent and our companies to those areas. Um, what could we do? Any any thoughts on what we could do along this mid-Atlantic corridor to um, really shore up what we do as investors? Well, you know, I've, I've been hearing for quite some time about the interest in making Baltimore a tech hub. And I could see uh, the attractiveness to it, especially to young people or companies because the cost of living uh, here is, you know, can be less, especially than something like New York. And um, there's a, a kind of um, a culture and feel for the city that's very cool. It's got that industrial edge, you know, the inner harbor, places like Fells Point. So I think, um, uh, and there's been efforts by Goldman Sachs and some other large investors yeah. to build out those areas. And I think that would help too, because you definitely need um, tech scenes do seem to flourish, obviously, in more urban areas. And um, it, we've seen, for example, the exodus from Silicon Valley to Texas because of cost of living. Right. Well, why don't we make that, um, you know, and, and emphasize places like Baltimore, because there is a, such a coolness to Baltimore. And I think it's uh, doesn't get the attention um, it deserves. Uh, all cities need to work on different things. But um, there there's something really um, fun about Baltimore. And I think uh, they're also in the state of Maryland with, you know, the um, uh, biotech scene here, cyber. We've mm -hmm. got, you know, a lot of three-letter agencies here. I think there, uh, there is a, a need to communicate better about all of the opportunities and growth there are. There are a lot of companies being started here um, and in really uh, cutting edge sectors. So um, we may be a little state, but we're mighty. And yeah. uh, I think Tenco is able to also take advantage of that because we invest here locally. So our portfolio has yeah. such a diverse uh, types of companies. And so I think, you know, highlighting those things and, and just showing that this is a great place to live and a great career to have. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you know, we've got 300 companies ish in our portfolio. Uh, many of those are going to uh, fall uh, in your uh, office uh, as you move forward as our senior director for venture funds. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we look forward to having you uh, uh, continue to advance your career with us and, and uh, carry the, the Maryland flag. Um, but uh, so before we, we wrap up, uh, any comments, any, any questions, any questions for me? I mean, this is kind of like we met each other months ago and this was our, you know, how we talked all the time was through these calls, but uh, any, any questions for me uh, that uh, you might have? Sure. You know, I think what to you is your, you know, your real initiative or focus, you know, be it an industry or a type of founder or anything, what, what would be the thing that you really want to focus on in, in 2020? 
2022. <laughs> but, you know, look, I, and I think it, I think it is uh, kind of a, a, a multi-decade uh, focus uh, for me um, because it's such a significant issue that needs to be addressed. Um, my, my hope is that, you know, you talked earlier about you're never going to develop a medical device that's going to save thousands of lives, but you might be able to invest in it. I kind of look at the same thing uh, for our role at TEDCO, that we might not be able to solve a lot of the inequalities that we have. We might not be able to solve some of the biases that exist, but we might be able to put our money to work and purposefully drive some change there. And I think that um, especially the way things are right now, that it, it's really important that um, people stand up and, and try to do the right thing. And, and TEDCO for me is the right place to do that. And, you know, having you join, I think really underscores that, that you saw the same, you see the same thing I do in the, our ability to have a social impact and our ability to make some change and our ability to have our dollars do work that, you know, we might not be able to do ourselves. And uh, so that for me is, is why I'm here and, and why I, I like working with Troy and the rest of TEDCO so much. And you now as well. So Well, I, I agree. I, one, uh, a major interest was when you first talked about the social impact mission, because that's important to me. Right. I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend early in my career, you know, I got my MBA in New York and I was surrounded by a fantastic finance industry. I wanted to make a lot of money. I'm not going to pretend yeah. I didn't, you know, but, yeah. but as uh, I progressed in my career and I, what I have witnessed and been subject to myself now more than ever uh, impact is really important to me. But I think that also there needs to be a clear message that impact doesn't mean uh, concessionary returns and, yeah. And there are fantastic uh, companies and founders where we can do very well uh, in our ROI and we're not compromising. So I, I want to make sure that that's clear too, but it is important to me. I want to wake up every day and feel great about what I'm doing. And, and so Tedco's uh, uh, mandate for impact resonated with me immediately. And so that was another strong reason why I wanted to join the team. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it is a it is maybe a triple bottom line, but certainly a double bottom line. You know, we're the strategic direct investors on behalf of the state of Maryland um, and we have to have a return. Right. I mean, that's that's uh, what our dual mandate is, if you will. Um, but uh, I think what's great about what we do and what you'll find as a venture investor at Tedco is that um, we uh, while we're driving uh, IRR, we're so early on, we're really more focused on total value on our paid in capital, right? So that number, that multiple on invested capital really is more important to us than IRR. So yeah, I mean, I grew up uh, watching uh, Wall Street and uh, wanting to be uh, a gazillionaire, probably like everybody else. Um, but you do, you know, for, I, I just, uh, maybe, uh, maybe I changed, maybe the environment changed, but, you know, uh, making sure that that is an and statement, we can make money and uh, cause uh, some change that is important that uh, maybe not everybody else can. Um, I know some people cannot uh, by, you know, by the, by the rules of their investment policy statement, uh, it has to be all about the IRR. Uh, we have the luxury of it not being 100% of our mission. Um, so um, anyway, Catherine, great to have you here. Uh, it's great to have you on the team already after what, four days of, uh, <laughs> of, of meetings with you and uh, really appreciate your joining TEDCO. So uh, that's it for us. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Glad to be on the team with you.